Subscribe to Film Companion for your film fix. Hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us on the first episode of FC Retake. This is a show in which we revisit older films. We deep dive into one film on every episode looking at how the film is aged, what worked, what didn't and why it continues to endure. Our first pick is Imtiaz Ali's Tamasha which released in 2015. Tamasha wasn't a success. It opened at a little over 10 crore and underperformed at the box office. It was dubbed a class film rather than a mass film. It was also an expensive film which did not recover its investment. But in the years since, Tamasha has become a cult film with legions of fans. Their umpteen blogs devoted to Ved and Tara and the conversation about their unique love story continues. Even the folks who were knocked off their feet seem to have come around. I'm one of those, but first I'm going to speak to Rahul Desai, who joins me in this conversation. Were you always a fan? I wasn't. Actually, even I was one of those. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Back in 2015, I remember going in uh, as a like a young critic under pressure on a Friday morning. They didn't have a the pressure. The usual, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I went and you know, the first thing that hit me was the, the opening credits. And that's when you actually realize that this film is different. Is different. Yeah. And I know it's a cliche, but you know, uh, as a critic at that point of time, when you don't have much time to think, you're immediately your brain is starting to sort of uh, make notes and make future notes about how to make sense of this film. So I sort of went into that whole, I got a little uh, intimidated by the film and I didn't know what to make of it. I didn't have the time, like most of us on Friday mornings don't have the time to get into a film. So by the time I got home, I was not impressed by the film. Uh, I sort of tried to uh, sit the fence at that point of time because uh, uh, like with mo most Imtiaz Ali films, there was more to it. I knew it, but I just didn't know what it was. So I came back and you know, I, as it should have been, I mean, I got pity like uh, I, I didn't get some good feedback for that review and I, I, I knew it because we hadn't done a good job. I thought we had, most of us had done injustice to that film. Did you not get seduced by Corsica? I got seduced by Corsica, yes, but that was actually my least favorite part of the film. Really? The first half? Yeah, the Why? first Corsica part at huh. that point of time because... Until like, then, you know, not now. No, no, no now it's, I'm a totally new person. <laughs> you know it, everyone knows it. But uh, no, Corsica, was, it didn't work for me then because I thought the filmmaker was trying too hard to make it obvious that he is self-aware about telling a story that has been told before. Hmm. Even the song lyrics go like, you know, a story within a story. Correct. And uh, kani fir ek yeah. bar and, yeah. you know, so I was like, okay, nice. I get it. I get what you're trying to do, but it's a, it's coming across as a little over smart. But you know, over time, over the last two years, again, you know, I maintain that uh, very few films in your life that you actually watch uh, at, uh, at an opportune time later in your life. I watched it two years later. Uh, it was the situation, it was my stage at life, it could have been a lot of things. But it it just, something clicked, you know, every scene I was almost pausing and I was like, how, how blind was I two years ago? You know, and that was the one part where I felt like, you know, people say that critics don't go in uh, as audiences. And for that film, I regret that I'd gone in only as a critic and mm -hmm. only as a professional because I forgot to uh, put on my, like, I, I forgot to uh, look at the film for what it was trying to tell me. So when I watched it again in 2017, ever since then, I've been like a Tamasha uh, revolutionary. I've been trying to convince people, including you <laughs> and half a film companion that it's a great film. <laughs> but, but you uh, know, you know, Rahul, I'll tell you, I was not a fan. Um, you know, okay, let me, let me, uh, so I love the first half. Uh, for me, the love story worked just, it was dazzling, it was magical, they're both so beautiful. And the, what I loved was how um, it was very uh, textured, you know, it was, it, it wasn't a yeah. performative hmm. kind of piece. It was, it was, they were both sort of versions of themselves, just these dazzlingly beautiful people being cooler than we can ever be in this most gorgeous place and the whole idea that that they would have this relationship which is entirely based on lies yeah. um, was was very seductive mm. and you know exactly. hum bhi kahenge, mm, kahenge, ke se right. kuch nahi uh, I thought that was just such a great conceit and the whole thing of celebrating the art of storytelling yeah. and why stories matter and and you know how they help us to make sense of the indifferent universe but what I did not um, sort of you know, I really got disconnected in the second half 
um, despite the performances which continued to be mm. amazing um, the, the whole idea of you know even the rickshaw driver is a thwarted uh, yeah. person who then finds his Fine. his true joy uh, you know the fact that his father turns around in like literally one conversation yeah. i think for me that was just my like right. oh my god are you serious mm. and you know so i liked it but i didn't love it yeah. but this time mm. thanks to you <laughs> i went back and saw it and i have to say i really loved it yeah I mean I, it's grown it's it it's has, aged well it's aged uh, brilliantly and yeah. like now when i go back i treat it as a puzzle you know like b- b- when i start watching the film and i watch it umpteen times since then really why i watch different parts you huh. know sometimes when i'm eating dinner i have this habit of having to watch something all the time when i'm eating i just watch scenes from tamasha and what do you watch which ones uh, i watch the two breakup scenes that doesn't reflect well on me <laughs> but uh, uh, but i also uh, watch the opening credits yeah. like for example now you notice a lot of smaller things that were uh, sort of it was almost like he was warning us about what was going to happen for the rest of the film and there were so many things like chali kani uh, the song itself like the opening words are that the opening lines are that there's a rhythm to the story and mm. it's it's the whole film is that uh, piyush mishra's character who i thought at that point was really annoying uh, no annoying and i yeah, could understand it very annoying saying. then yeah yeah and but now i'm it is it's almost profound because uh, the guy is uh, there's a kid who goes to him in shimla every day he pays him to tell a story and the guy mixes up all the famous such stories such a lovely scene and, and he says but wohi kahani hai wohi kahani chalti hai like if you look at it this way or you look at it that way which is great and yeah. even the like he's mixing up uh, one way of looking at it is he is he's crazy he's eccentric so he's mixing up stories uh, but this this style the way he says that and the way uh, what he teaches the kid at that point of time it's reflected throughout the film in ranbir's personality in wade's personality because wade doesn't know which story he is he doesn't know if uh, he's living his lie or he's living his truth and you know the whole point of tara being in his life is that she's there to tell him that his lie is the truth and Uh, and i thought that was beautiful because if you notice even in the music and i have loved the music of the film even when i didn't me like too. the film me too me too i love it just, i love heer to badi sad i yeah, love agar absolutely. tum saath ho i love all those songs agar tum yeah. saath ho heer to badi sad hai matar gashti yeah. especially the opening song the chali kani and matar gashti which was in corsica yeah. yeah. uh, if you notice they have no rhythm to it no single rhythm to it it's like you are seeing 10 different you are hearing 10 different songs within a song Uh, if you actually try to hum these songs to yourself now in mm. 2019 or whenever you do you don't know if it's the same song anymore because you're humming different parts of it and they all feel like i feel like ar rahman actually was either he did it he interpreted it that way or he was given a brief that you know every song should be like a mixture melange of different rhythms of different melodies yeah and it wasn't conventional at all it did not follow the rules of music of as we know it and uh, again that's reflected in wade's personality throughout because his real personality keeps shining through his mask correct right correct. and yeah. the songs are like that and uh, you know and I, th- that's why i feel like the corsica part now is for me it works because there's a lot of foreshadowing in the corsica yeah. part yeah. the first also time. all the all the wade in front of mirrors the mirror the duality is is so is lovely it's, it's so lovely and you know in the end right at the end um, raul when when of course when he comes back and she sees that piece of paper that says dawn returns uh, you know and and that little thing he does in front of the mirror after he's convinced his father hmm. and he just looks into the mirror and does this devanand yeah, imitation devanand imitation which is doing mostly it's lovely through. it's and just it's, lovely it's a very um, it's a very uh, uh, difficult thing to pull off without seeming crazy you know yeah. like yeah. without that's it's where it's a tough performance it's a very tough performance yeah. because you know uh, he is basically trying to escape uh, corsica represented escapism yeah. for him for all of us uh, and that's why i believe personally what corsica meant was like it's like when we go to the films uh, we want to be that version of ourselves that we always are when we watch films or when we go travel when we are with our family when we are playing with our dogs that's the self the true self that's a true self yeah. that's why first dates happen over films or it uh, or you know the first traveling between uh, after the honeymoon is such an important part of our culture Correct. because that's when you first travel together that's when you're vulnerable with each other and that's why that's what corsica represented and i think that's wade's conflict throughout the film like it's it's basically about how to be that person forever yeah and 
how do you do that by making your passion your work which yeah. is he becomes a storyteller correct and correct. that's the only way that's how all of us when we are writing i think that's the best version of myself when you are yeah. uh, working it's the same thing for all of us yeah yeah i loved how he did the little things you know like um when in corsica um, you know she initiates the love making yes. uh, then she comes down and she sits in the car and she takes that little breath yeah. and that's your signal that this has become something else yeah. you know that this is more than either one had bargained for hmm. and you know i think it's interesting that it's of course his story it's his confusion um, she is really the savior yeah. in the scenario uh, but i found her at least through the first half to be the more interesting yeah, character sure. mm. um, you know she she had way more maturity um, she handled it so much better um, tell me what you feel about the whole uh, fan theory that in fact he's bipolar yeah again uh, as i said i think uh, the word bipolar is mentioned thrice mm. in the film and that took totally out of context all are during corporate presentations one is when ved is giving his first presentation in the office with his in front of his bad boss and uh, the award in there for vivek mushra oh, was for sure. fabulous he, he was fantastic <laughs> he was a caricature but he was also he represented so much yeah. in life that all of yeah. us sort of and, and when he says to him that 15 saal mein tum meri jagah ho sakte ho it yeah. was just and then ranbir kind of reacting you know and the best part about the boss character is even when ranbir is losing it in front of him he's yeah. melting down in his office yeah uh, and ranbir is like sach mein and he's mocking him <laughs> that guy still doesn't know he's he doesn't mocking know. Him. Yeah, yeah. till he was like keh do ke ye jhoot hai correct you know correct. when he uses his hand and stuff yeah. that's when vivek mushan is like oh god this yeah. guy is lost he's, it he's and, he's and that's so much down. about the characters that they are out to sort of yeah. capture but as for the bipolar thing i mean it's mentioned twice it's an easter egg i think he's put it in deliberately to sort of throw us throw a lo- so that in case ranbir's performance may not have worked out Uh, there was something to fall back on see uh, my only theory about the uh, uh, ved having bipolar disorder is that he doesn't it's just that the conflict between dreams and reality or the conflict between uh, the culture that our parents represent and the culture that we represent uh, is the fact that uh, we as a country look upon mental illness the way we look upon dreams hmm. we are in denial about both of them and that's the reason i think uh inadvertently or purposely the, his entire condition has assumed that whole uh mental illness uh, uh sort of look the s- sound of it and the uh, even the, the way yeah, aggression yeah, and the aggression yeah. and the sudden unpredictable behavior but the, those are no those are not symptoms of actual bipolar disorder i think it's just an interpretation it's it's sort of a metaphor almost because he is basically treating dreams as a mental as a mental illness for society hmm. and that's how uh, most parents look at it like the whole iit mba uh, rat race is such that if you dare to dream about anything else uh, they lack like you're crazy yeah right yeah. and that's pretty he much said you know we we uh, did an inside the scene of the scene where uh, where they, they confront each other yeah. in in the bar and then you know she he he completely loses it and he has actually said that uh, um uh, he, he doesn't see uh, ved as bipolar he said he may have some traits uh, but he's not uh, you know he doesn't have the condition yeah. uh, i think it's it's also very interesting how he kind of um, wove the whole story within a story so you know you open with the play <laughs> and you end with the play right. and 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 just the the editing and the weaving of fantasy and reality you yeah. know so at one point he sees ha- ha- house help and he becomes aladdin ka jinn right. you know yeah. it's it's like those fantastical elements where you seeing storytelling and the power Absolutely. of storytelling everywhere and so yeah. here's my question now then why in such a intricately layered uh, narrative did imtiaz decide to kind of make that father switch which was the pivotal point hmm. so easy again i think i'll just uh, go back to the first opening part there because uh, i mean the fact that throughout we are warned that you know this is uh, more about rhythm it's about coming of it's about a coming of age individual almost selfish story of a person who of a man child who needs to sort of see his own truth uh, i agree that that was very convenient but 
if that monologue doesn't do it because that monologue it was, was all about storytelling yeah. again yeah. he told he it in the form of a story it came a full circle huh. his father never understood him when he wasn't telling a story when when he became part of his family's story or his what his family wanted him to do that's when he was unhappy and when he finally broke uh, free and told it in the only language he wanted to tell it uh his father came of age i agree it was convenient but i think it fit uh, within the texture of storytelling in the film because every crucial part of the film has a storytelling element to it because even in the beginning when we are seeing those opening credits and the you know the the vivid the color tone and the, robot and, the and, yeah, yeah. and he's imagining a leela majnu or ramayan uh, uh, yeah. you know a sony maiwal you are actually seeing all these characters within the simla school mm-hmm. within the simla environment it's basically a kid's imagination because he only hears these stories from uh, piyush mishra yeah. and he doesn't know what maybe lanka would look like or or you know leela majnu's environment would look. so he's imagining it in his corridors and uh, in this in everything it reminded me of amelie which is again one of my favorite films yeah, it's, it's the way wonderful. she looked at life yeah. uh, ved was looking at life like that but the only difference between the French culture and the Indian cultures even though art is a big deal here here people don't understand art as much so they dismiss you as crazy so in the end when he finally uses that monologue to convince his a uh, father more than his father's faces i love watching the two women's faces in the frame yeah. the mother and the grandmother yeah. because that is where i saw that is where i saw uh, us, uh, all of us as an audience also and it was just it almost because they sort of related to him far more because he was talking about how a woman changed him and how it took an accidental meeting in kosika somewhere between dil and dunya right, right. right. and in kosika i remember they have a line ki um, इस दुनिया का दिल उस दुनिया में नहीं चलता है यू नो बट बट ऑफ कोर्स इट इट डज यू नो द अदर थिंग दैट वॉज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टू मी इज नाउ वेन आई लुक एट द स्ट्रक्चरिंग इट सीम्स सो अहेड इवन फॉर नाउ यू नो टू हैव द द सरदार्स कॉमेंटिंग लाइक अ ग्रीक कॉरस ऑन द नैरेटिव यू नो द हीड तो बड़ी सैड है इज इज हैपनिंग फॉर सम रीजन इन पंजाब एंड एंड यू आर जस्ट कटिंग एंड शोइंग अस हाउ शी सैड एंड आई जस्ट फॉन्ट लाइक वाओ वॉट करेज एज अ स्टोरी टेलर टू टेक दोज लीप्स एब्सोलूटली यू नो yeah i mean uh, the editing for me is easily even for me if, even for like the way um, rockstar was edited for example even though it like was hit or miss with a lot of people again I, a miss with me but now that you persuaded me to see this yeah, i'll see I mean, that again i i you you will see the same the, he has the same editor so you will see the same editing pattern and i remember him even saying it at one point that it was made on the edit table like mm. both films mm. and like tamasha especially as you said it's really complex but it's not like rockstar where you feel like the editing is trying to rescue the film in the second half Correct. in tamasha there is actual thought and stru- uh, and uh, there's it's by design it's by design yeah. it's there's a lot of things like the whole jump between uh, the end and the beginning and you know uh, you, you're seeing uh, even when ranbir is breaking down after the breakup after tara leaves him mm. and ranbir is like in delhi going through his old routine again you keep flashing forward to a time where you already know he's become a storyteller yeah. where the rickshaw driver that he starts Correct. talking to is already in his place yeah that yeah. takes immense belief in your own storytelling abilities like even and india trust in the audience said, and trust in the audience yeah. uh, of course the trust didn't immediately pay off but i think yeah. people uh, has have sort of seen how the editing goes uh, in tandem with the personality of ved or with the uh what do you call it the sur of the story itself because it's all about several people being trapped within one person and yeah. him trying to break free so the editing does the same thing and it's very difficult to let your craft uh internalize uh you know the soul of your story mm. it's very difficult it's easier said than done i yeah. thought like a film that had come close to doing and this year was judgmental like yeah. mm. uh, with the way they shot it fractured. and edited it yeah, yeah. very fractured yeah. it's just that it was a different kind of story it was about like someone with a disorder yeah. someone struggling but tamasha the reason it hit home over a period of time is because it told a story that all of us have suppressed within ourselves too as right. kids right i mean we all have gone through it and it's just it's a film that beautifully sort of gives us those songs gives us those characters and tells us that we uh, can sound and look as beautiful as them yeah i wish yeah, <laughs> okay last question you think they're happy 
I th I've thought about it a lot. Unfortunately, whenever it depends on the week I'm actually in. <laughs> but uh, this week, I really feel like uh, uh, I don't think they end up together. Uh, really? I mean, they do. They what? work yeah, together. Rao, you're such a downer, man. Yeah, yeah. They work After together. After that Shashtang Pranam he did to her from the stage. Oh, that was beautiful. I it was just was going so through beautiful. it again today. It was so beautiful. But you know, let me let me explain that moment also because that was a beautiful scene, and he's you can see it in his eyes that he he absolutely has he thanks this. It she's yeah. forget that she's a woman. He thanks this human being that f just for being there for changing his life absolutely. and giving him a voice. Yeah. And you see that uh, gratitude in on his face. But the thing is, uh, your you know the most important relationship in your life is not always the most. It's not always the lasting relationship. La La Land, for example. Sure. is that story mm. there's always one relationship which comes and changes you for the better puts you on a path to uh, to greater success or to find yourself but that relationship almost never endures and most great love stories or great tragedies are those stories like they all their only role is to come uh, change you for the better Transform uh, to find you with love. yeah to find yourself to find a path because you know if you notice even he's changed her Right. Like he has, maybe right. not as vividly because the story, the narrative is around him, but he has also changed her for the better. She went back to uh, Calcutta after Corsica and, and dumped the guy the, she was the with. The bland man that yeah. she was with. She took yeah. risks, her career took off. Sure. She was in Japan by the end. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, there's always like looking at it, even from a cinematic perspective, uh, I, I think the sequel wouldn't like if there ever was one. They, they wouldn't be together, but they'd share that look whenever they see each other, like in La La Land, that last shot. Right. Because they know what they've done to each other, and they know that I'm sure he would probably bow down to her wherever he sees her. <laughs> and but that's also more than love most of the time. Like that's, that's true. That, that is. is true. In fact, I think if there is to be a sequel, we should make it the story of Tara. Absolutely. In fact, I I was very interested whenever uh, Imtiaz Ali. Uh, after concentrating on Ved for say 10 minutes in the film would then suddenly uh, switch to Tara and then show us what she's done in those 10 minutes yeah. or yeah. in those 6 months yeah. and he'd you know he'd go and he'd use a storytelling pattern again and uh, I thought that was very interesting and I thought there's a whole parallel film about what Tara was going through at the same time that Ved was Correct. because those 6 months that just passed by him jobless and him going back to his family and giving that monologue we just know that Tara was in Japan by the end yeah. and yeah. she is pissed off with him saying yeah. that I will torture you for this Correct. but you know I'd love to know what she did then like, you think uh, that Chinese uh, imitation she does at that point people would get away with it now or would they get oh flagged? I was thinking about it today when I was Hena? watching it they would get flagged they would get flagged sure. no yeah but I, I do not see it as offensive in any way because uh, we are seeing two people being goofy with each other. Right. They are absolutely and politically a incorrect on, on political this. incorrectness yeah, yeah, also. Yeah. In Corsica, there were people they were mixing Dawn and ten other films, and yeah. they were uh, being they thought they were lying to each other, yeah. but they were actually you know Telling bearing the their soul. Yeah, bearing yeah. their soul. One of my favorite moments is when he says, "Aapki husn ki dikh rahi and she throws oh, right. her shirt yeah, off. Oh, right. Yeah, that. It's just Fabulous. So, um, I hope they make a sequel with Tara as the lead. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and we will be back, everyone, we'll be back next month to discuss another film. Uh, Rahul, do you want to announce what it is? Uh, it will be Jagga Jasus. It's not a Ranbir special. Uh, <laughs> it just so turns out that his films age better than most. And uh, yeah, so it will be Jagga Jasus. Excellent. We will see you. Thank you so much for watching. So what are your theories about Ved and Tara? Please tell us in the comments below if you like this video. Of course, subscribe. And next month, we're going to be talking about Anurag Basu's Jagga Jasus. Uh, watch it and join in the conversation.